My buddy got me back eventually, but I got my buddy what started this with, with a glass about this tall of Everclear. Oh my god. Yeah. That's not right. No, it was, it was, it was <laughs> Well, that's it was just funny. not right. It's funny. I figured out how to speak T Rex that night. So let's do it. <laughs> Well, he's got a new single out and uh, breaking some rules here at the Up and Country Studios. He brought his puppy. Greg Pratt is here. Hey, Greg. Hey, good to see you again. It's, I'm so excited you're back. So Greg was my very first in-person interview when we got here to Nashville in January. Now, a lot has happened with you oh, yeah. in the last almost year. year. So tell me what's been going on. We finally dropped that first single uh, don't last long. We had a lot of success with it. It's been awesome. Um, it's been nonstop all year. And it's been really cool because a lot of that traction did come from you being so cool and letting us come in here and Good. an interview. And it's uh, I had a, a lot of fans from California. I know you're, it's uh, out in California too, in Santa Monica. But that one went great um, right off the bat. And we released... That was it, Don't Last Long. And we released first, which was a little bit more country, leading into CMA week. And and that got some pretty good traction too, and and that was more um, kind of '90s feeling, um, with a little bit of modern country feel in it. And then we really kind of hunkered down and needle nosed our uh, our direction as far as what we wanted everything to sound like from there on out. And this next one's going to be really cool because I think we finally finally really got real specific on what we want me to sound like and have the Greg Pratt sound fully formed for 2023. And 2023 is going to be busy. 2023. So, okay. But what are the biggest plans in 2023 so far? Well, right now we're working um, <clears throat> to get the full band together to go on tour. We're doing some shows in town to kind of tighten everybody up. We have some fantastic players. And for me, it's been interesting because I've been doing uh, acoustic shows for yes. since I got here. I've been here for, I think this is the end of the seventh year. Leading up, um, leading up, and I think it, it turns seven. My seventh Nashville anniversary is—is uh, <laughs> is that what they're calling it? Yeah, I think there's something like that um, in June of this year. So, um, but going. Oh, you wake now, buddy. You gonna say hey, everybody? <laughs> everybody, this is Rowdy. Um, so, going from just acoustic shifts where I'm making all the music and I'm I'm sitting down and and doing it all myself. It's interesting working with a band because I've had to learn to let go and what wow. to do to let them kind of take the music and have me focus on entertaining and connecting with an audience. And it, it is an adjustment, but it's going really well. And, and the audiences who have come out to see our shows in Nashville so far, full band have been really, really cool about the whole thing, um, getting up, dancing and stuff. And um, <clears throat> it's it's a privilege to be able to play with these kind of players because these players are all fantastic, um, you know, way, way beyond their years. And it's, they all look good, so it's. I'm, I'm excited to see what twenty what happens in 2023. So, uh, so you don't do you need a tambourine player? Because I'm really good. I've see, been practicing. It's been weird. It's been you'll, on you'll, your foot. You'll the whole see time. me. You'll <laughs> see me on stage, and I'll, I'll be. I've kind of got to where I'm not tapping the front anymore because I had my manager tell me he goes, uh, you know, you you're up there, but you're still tapping a ghost tambourine up there. And uh, so I was kind of. It's a little bit more natural if I start tapping my heel. I started moving around a little bit, but they don't tell you what to do when you get up there. You just get up there and you learn how to entertain yeah. and you tread water and you figure out what to do. So I'm going through that whole process right now. It's kind of cool. And uh, we're figuring out what works and what doesn't. But once this thing gets completely tightened up, it's going to be a hell of a set of shows in 23 for sure. Well, I've seen some of your videos and things, and I love that you you involve the audience so much. Like if you're going to go to a Greg Pratt show, you're most likely going to be on his social media. Absolutely. Like most likely you take videos with your crowd and, and fit photos and the whole thing. And people do some crazy stuff. I know. <laughs> like we had, a, we had a thing going on in TikTok for a while. It's like crazy fan of the week. And <laughs> there's always somebody doing some absolutely ridiculous. And I love it because that's, that's what I want to happen at my shows for people to actually let go and have a good time. And, you know, in today's world, I think we need that more than ever. Oh, sure. yeah. What, so what's the, what's the craziest thing that anyone has done at one of your shows? I'll be honest. Um, I know I had a, a, another interview with, with Devin a while ago, and they talked about this, and they kind of they didn't corner me into it, but it came out. Um, they just, just people taking their shirts off. And, and I have <laughs> you to. Mean, wait, hold I, on. Let me clarify. Thing, Women taking their shirts yeah, off? Let me clarify. Yeah, that's happened. Like, right. I just I have to be like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that going like, to, I, I don't have, a, like, do I have a problem with it? Absolutely not. But, you know, I think the venue might have a little bit of a problem with mm, that. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, somebody's getting kicked out. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. All right, we have to talk about the puppy. All right, so um, this was actually uh, last week's show. There was a crew that came in that has been watching me since I played in Key West, Songwriters Festival down in Key West. They found me down there because I didn't only play the Songwriters Festival, I also played Duval Street with my buddy Rylan, who plays the fiddle, and we played 
every night for like two weeks um, in the closing shift. And it was just us two. And uh, these people saw me there uh, years ago. So they were at a show last week. Um, and <laughs> they uh, I talked on the show or in the microphone. And I go, hey, uh, so I am actually looking for a dog. It's the kind of dog I'm looking for. It's about time for this. And she comes up and she shows me a picture of this little guy. Who's, oh, my gosh. Who's on the, and I was like, that's the one I want. She, she's like, well, this litter is ready now. I was like, oh. Okay, well, you know, be careful what you ask for, right? Yeah, that, and that's what it happened. So we got hooked up. She was one of her childhood friends. Because, um, you know, it's, it's kind of scary when you're first doing it because there's a lot of puppy scams out there. Um, but they were really cool, and they flew him in this morning. I've been oh kind of watching him. We got, got him set up with his first wellness visit tomorrow. Um, and then he's going to go straight to Florida with me wow. to meet mom and dad, too. So. so He is so cute. This is Rowdy, and he's so soft. <laughs> and how he's so soft. I can't help it. <laughs> now, how big is he going to get? Uh, it's probably a max out of 11 pounds. 11 pounds. 11 pounds. And what kind? Uh, he's a mini cream dachshund. Mini cream dachshund. So. Okay. Short legs, long boy. Well, when he's when he's awake, if he wakes up, he may be sleep through the whole thing. I mean, you know, I have that kind of voice. I just lull people to sleep. He's dreaming right now. I can tell. <laughs> he's like, oh, it's so good, it's so good. Um, so let's talk about um, CMA Fest this year. Uh, you were on stage with a pretty big name. Yeah, it was fun. I got a call because uh, we were. I was playing that morning anyway. Um, I think it was a Friday, and they said, "Hey, we got an opportunity for you, um, but you're going to have to MC." And you're going to have to play in between the acts. And they didn't tell me who they were um, until we got there that night. And uh, you know, my manager really helped out, um, kind of keeping everything facilitated. Uh, but we had I got up there. I started playing. Um, it was a birthday party uh, for, I think her name was Lisa. And we got connected with it, uh, through it, with Ward Gunther and a man named Ed Warm, who works up in Chicago. Um, but I look at the list of people I'm introducing. I'm like, holy crap, it's... Breland, it's Lainey Wilson, it's uh, it's uh, Larry Fleet, it's it's it was there was some fantastic song, or songwriter uh, Ben Johnson I think was there too, um, Ernest got up oh nice so it's and it's these it's <coughs> interesting to sit down there and introduce these guys and you pump them up for this crowd who's who's already they're already heavily drinking they're having a great time anyway <laughs> and then you watch them get up there and sound exactly like the damn record wow and it's it's just really cool they were all really cool about everything. Um, it was really kind of cool to watch Lainey get the success she did this year because sitting down and talking to her, I know my manager's known her for a long time. And um, it was it was interesting because I, I came up, I had to learn her songs the night before. Nice. So I I didn't know I was playing behind her. Um, so I came up with like, I hope I got this right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I got these right. If I screw up, just ignore it. She's like, Greg, I'm sure you did fine. I've heard your records already. I love them. You're nice. going to be great. And it was so cool. Like it was, it was, you know, it's, since getting here, I haven't had a lot of like, you know, fan kid moments, but as soon as like that happened, I'm like, holy crap, this girl's a real deal. Yeah. She's oh, yeah. a real deal. Um, I she's not that part. <laughs> I like Yellowstone too. I, I I got sick on that show a little while ago and seeing her in it. And seeing her, I know. Job. It's very, very cool. Well, you might be on Yellowstone next. You never know. Lord, I, I, <laughs> I can only hope. Jeez. Right. Now, one of your videos uh, that I saw you do, um, you're doing John Michael Montgomery Sold. Yeah. And it's the fastest version of that <laughs> song I've ever seen. Now you have you have the song was Fastest Hands, right? Mm -hmm. Because I mean you're a pretty fast guitar player, but I was impressed with the amount of speed that, with how you sang that song. Yeah. So it started. We just did it regular. <laughs> so when you're solo, you kind of and you have a crowd, you kind of have to pump them up a little bit more, and you so you play everything a little bit more fast. You good, buddy? <laughs> Get you. There you go. Um, but I said, so why not? Why not add a mod in there? Modulate it up a up a, a half step. I think it's either a half or a full step and a mod up. And at the very end, you just take it as fast as it can possibly go. And it it went over well the first time. I think I probably got about 35% of the words. <laughs> first time I did it, but then it, it ended up working out. I was so gonna say, I mean, I thought I thought you were getting all the words. That's already a fast that, that's song. A, that's you a know? lot of practice. A lot of practice. Yeah. Doing I mean, so. honestly, uh no, but it's really good. So um so we got the dog here. This is a, a first for us here in the studio. At some point, I want to get this doggy out of he's the bag. Like a, you can hold him. <laughs> you know, I don't want to wake him up, though. He's so cute. 
He's he's been napping on off all day. So. He's so so cute. And um, Greg, my new best friend, brings a puppy and tequila. This is another first for the show. Not that we haven't had you know beverages on the show, but um, tequila not had not had tequila on the show. Uh, so we have. You a, can't make a face when you take it. Okay. We don't have any lines, so you can't you can't make a face. No okay, faces. well it's it's good tequila too. So yeah, it's good. So we'll be. I think it'll be okay. Uh, but we have a game we have to play. Okay. Called truth I remember, or truth. This last time. Truth or truth. Uh, so we're gonna have some truth serum. Uh, so I've got that <laughs> coming up. <laughs> truth serum first, then truth or truth. Uh, and Greg is also going to do a uh, performance for us, and you can catch that uh, if, using the link in the description. So go in the description, and you can check out his performance. So um, we're gonna get all set up with some tequila right now. Let's go. <laughs> it's truth or truth. All right, we're back for our game of truth or truth, and uh, f- f- it's a first here in the Up and Country Studios. A uh, little tequila, little truth serum for us. Uh, I've got a little toast for you. Ready? Okay. And you said anything goes, right? Sure. Yeah. Goes? Okay. Here's to you. Here's to me. The best of friends will always be, and if we ever disagree, f you. And here's to me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. You didn't make a face. That's good. Yeah, that's good. good. It's good to feel that's damn good that's tequila smooth. right there. Okay, well, that's our truth serum. Hey, yo. So now we're going to play our little game. I'm going to give him to you. Ooh, that's like very... A um, little bit of vanilla in there. Vanilla, too. that's what I was just going to say. Bunny. It's the vanilla. That was yeah. really good. Okay, yeah. now I get to hold the puppy. Look at this little puppy. Oh, right Look at this All right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, kind of got to hold Oh, this. I got a mic. I know. Mic on the lapel. I know. Okay, Look. there we go. Hi. Bingo. Hi. Look it. Oh, my goodness. Good morning. You've been sleeping forever, bro. <laughs> all right. So what am I doing here? So this is this is like all new right now. This is uh, we've not done this before. We've not had a, a puppy on the show. We've not had shots of tequila on the show. I don't know what else we can do uh, that's going to be different. You ready to pick a question? Is this how we do it, right? Yeah, you, he knows. You've been look. here before. There were some weird ones last time. We'll see what happens. Maybe you'll get hopefully you'll get different ones. Yeah. Go Can't ahead. Look right. <laughs> truth or truth? Truth or truth? What was the greatest day of your life? Today. It's Hell yeah. Today. Every day. Every day is the greatest day of my life. Oh, easy, right? you, look, you got this you got guy. It, um, I would probably say, um, <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it. It's great for a different reason. Um, so I had a it's great story here. Um, <laughs> great uncle. My great uncle. His name was Goat. He's no longer with us. He was the uncle in great uncle in our family, all from Louisiana, all his part of our family, we are from Louisiana. So, um, and he's kind of a big old guy, lived life to the very fullest. Um, he'd roll up in a, a Porsche, like a, a stick driven Porsche. And he'd walk out and he'd go, I don't even know how to drive a stick. <laughs> and it's, I was like, well, that transmission's done. So he came in, I came in, I was, uh, how old was I? It's the first day I ever had a shot of, of anything. It's Jack Daniels. Walking from the beach, we were down in Miami and uh, we're all getting there for a kind of a family reunion on my mom's side. And he goes, you thirsty? I was like, yeah. And been on the beach, the hottest crap out there. Um, he's like, you want some water? I was like, yeah, you need some. He's like, want some grown-up water? He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm grown. I'm eight years old. So it's like, you know, sure. sure. I'm sure. A, I'm a girl. And uh, <laughs> he pours me as like, why the hell is this glass so small? Um, and he pours Jack Daniels in it. I didn't know what it was. I was like, all right, I don't know what this is. Grown-up water, sure, cool. Coated the entire cabinet, so my mom cussed him out for like an hour. <laughs> um, and when I, when my mom, at that point, my mom didn't cuss, but she like, she did. She did all the all the the first letter of every word. But <laughs> that was a good one. After that, me and my uncle had a my great uncle had a really good relationship. Um, whenever I went to um, New Orleans, they would always show me around because they they lived in Baton Rouge. Um, him and my great aunt Pam, Pam, sorry, Pam, Pam. And then we had uh, Max, who was their adopted kid. When I go to New Orleans, I hang out with Max. Have you ever seen? If we have any Saints fans watching, there's a guy that dresses up like that guy from Star Wars with all the paint, uh-huh. but it's gold and black. Oh, it's okay. Darth Saint, and he's like recognized by the city as oh, like the That's unofficial cool. mascot. That's my cousin. That's your nice. cousin. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So wow. He wants to meet him too because he's got a, an English bulldog that he <laughs> he wants to be best friends with. Him. Okay. Yeah. One of the good ones right there. That's that's where I I figured out how crazy it was going to be to be a grown man one day. <laughs> Okay, the best day. All right, so now it's your turn. Oh, I'm playing? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I haven't done this before. Let's go. Okay, we'll see what happens. That's one. 
Who would you want to swap lives with for a week? Oh, you know what? Whoa. I've actually thought about this many times. Uh. It would probably be, uh, I'm going to say Ryan Seacrest. Okay, yeah. Just because, I mean, I'm in media and in radio and, you know, he's done radio and all the shows and he's involved in producing like so many different, he's involved in everything. Yeah. I'm like, the guy is everywhere. Um, you know so his voice, I would, as soon as he starts talking to you, his voice. Yeah, exactly. It's like he's recognizable. You know who he is. He's well respected. He's got his hands in flipping everything. Yeah. I'm like, that's who I would. I would be willing to swap lives with him for a week. All right. <laughs> Maybe the puppy. I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna take good care of him. So he's gonna be so spoiled. All my friends want to spoil I him too. Know. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Um, one more. Do one no, more. No, you're gonna do two more. <laughs> Truth to truth, what's the biggest prank you've ever <laughs> played on someone? <laughs> I'm gonna twist this around. I, I will tell you. So I, I was in college. And we had this game that we played called uh, Clear Blue Sky, not Blue Clear Sky. Clear Blue Sky. <laughs> um, we were pranksters. Like we would, we would. There was about twelve of us that go to Panama City every year and everything for spring break. This game, Clear Blue Sky. None of you ever need to play it. Don't ever do this, to anybody. Don't do it at home because it's an awful <laughs> thing and you're horrible people if you ever do this. But um, <clears throat> so in Clear Blue Sky, you have this. You have a, a cup of clear liquid, and you surprise someone to go Clear Blue Sky, and they have to look up. If they look at your eyes or they look at the liquid, they got to drink whatever's in there. And um, my buddy got me back eventually, but I got my buddy, what started this, what, with a glass about this tall of Everclear. Oh, my. Yeah. That's not right. No. It was, it was, it was <laughs> well, that's it was just funny. not right. It's funny. I figured out how to speak T-Rex that night. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. He was, he was not happy. And he got me back, you know, the week after. And I just, you know. <laughs> you figured out how to speak T-Rex? Yeah. <laughs> no, Chaz, he's call, call him dinosaurs. He's like, I saw aliens. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Yeah, he, he wasn't, wasn't very happy about that. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. All right, we got one more, huh? Okay, you got one more. Okay, buddy. He likes you. He's, He's so, so calm. He's so happy. Like, All right. Oh. Last one. To the truth, what's the secret you kept from your parents? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can if I can say this. Sure you they're can. they're going to watch Sure this. you can. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> no, no, I no, not that one. Mm -mm. I'm gonna pick a different one. Oh, no, 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 we're not gonna do that. breaking the rules See, what's, and everything. What's bad, what's bad about it is, I, as I know, he knows about it too. My manager, oh. my manager, <laughs> told him the story before. I can't, I can't do that. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> It's gonna have to. Now, that's going to the grave. Now they're gonna later. ask you about that at the holidays yep. and be like, yep. "So what's the story, Greg?" Yep. We're not, we're not gonna do that. Truth. What's one thing on your bucket list? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Um, not skydiving. <laughs> not, so, not skydiving. Um, okay. And, no, no, no. I'm a land going? animal. Where'd you going? I'm not scared of heights. Scared of falling from heights. Um, that's a good. I yeah. Fine. It's a very big difference. Mm -hmm. Last time we, I think we talked about something like this. How I, I wanted to release more hits than George Strait, and that's ah. really tough to do. Yeah, um, yes. I would say, um, if I wanted to get real about it, it would probably be playing a sold-out show for something like, I, I saw the, uh, what is it, the Queen movie, where oh, they, yeah. they went and they, and they did that big thing for charity, yes. which I, I love doing charity stuff. That's awesome. We do a lot of stuff with the American Cancer Society um, and, and St. Jude and with the marathons and stuff. I was with them the other week. We played in 30 degree weather. It was so Ooh. cold. Um, National Anthem at 7 a.m. We played two sets and it got colder as the day went on too. Wow. It was interesting. Um, but I'd say that, how many people were at that show um, doing what he did when he does the AO, AO, AO stuff. Right. Um, having everybody, a show that big, playing for that many people. Um, I, I forget the number, but it's it was like, you know, I think it was pretty much over 100,000 or something Yes, like I that. think so too. Um, playing a show like that having and, and having it be played by me at the best my possible possible ability the peak performance um it's okay if there's mess ups because there's mess ups in every show but um having something that big that people remember um be like if you were there i remember i was there right having something that big because that's something where people are going to remember that for the rest of their lives uh, yep. um and always be able to take a stop wherever they're doing in a day and be like i remember that that was awesome playing playing something that big i like it so, and then, and then also getting the the crowd involved. Yeah, you know where you get the crowd talking back to you and everything. I well, love that kind of crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. And you're good at that on your smaller shows. So you know, you just translate it to the big stage. Mm -hmm. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. 
little just right. <laughs> just a little bit. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming back to the Up and Country Studios, bringing the Absolutely. puppy, bringing the tequila. Oh my goodness, You're we being so chill with her. Too. We we're, we broke uh, we broke the rules. We did something completely different for this show. Uh, so I want to thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't seen Greg Pratt here in Nashville, come uh, see come, me. Come see a show. Download the music. All the things. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thanks for watching Up and Country. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment. We do new episodes every Tuesday and be sure to follow Up and Country on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And you can follow me too at Sue Bonzel on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.